Our world is always moving forwards, continuously creating and producing new innovative products and technologies. But our modern research and developments extend beyond our latest phone model or the newest medicine breakthrough. Some of the most fundamental research we carry out today focuses on unveiling past mysteries and rediscovering the lives of societies who shaped the world as we know it. From ancient societies' traditions and rituals to places we did not know existed, there are many unanswered questions within our history books. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three recent discoveries that have provided us with a glimpse into human history. Astronomers identified 24 superhabitable planets. It is possible there are planets out there that are more suited to life than our very own Earth. Astronomers have identified 24 potential superhabitable planets that were the subject of a study published in the journal Astrobiology called In the Search for a Planet Better Than Earth, Top Contenders for a Superhabitable World. The planets have the potential to support more biodiversity and biomass than the planet we currently call home. It is worth noting that habitability does not mean these planets definitely have life as the conditions for the origin of life is potentially more stringent than the persistence of life, merely the conditions that would be conducive to life as we know it. Washington State University scientist Dirk schultz maku partnered with astronomers René Heller of the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research and Edward Gwinnon of Villanova University to create a superhabitable criteria to determine which of the 4,500 exoplanets outside of our solar system qualify. The key criteria of a superhabitable planet are an age of 5 to 8 billion years, a mass of 1.5 times that of Earth and 10% larger, a surface temperature averaging 5 Celsius higher than Earth, a moist atmosphere with 25-30% to O2 levels, scattered land and water distributed with lots of shallow water areas and archipelagos, a large moon at a moderate distance, and has plate tectonics as well as a strong protective geomagnetic field. The researchers looked at G-stars similar to our Sun, which has a lifespan of around 10 billion years, which is relatively short-lived for a star. They also looked at K-dwarf stars, which are cooler and have lifespans between 20 and 70 billion years. This will give orbiting planets more time to advance. None of the 24 planets met all of the criteria, but one, 3,000 light-years away, met four, which would make it more habitable than Earth. Dirk schultz makuch said that we are so focused on finding a mirror image of Earth that we may overlook a planet that is even more well-suited for life. The study's authors argue that, with regard to the search for extrasolar life, potentially superhabitable planets may deserve higher priority for follow-up observations than most Earth-like planets. The study could help focus future observation efforts, such as NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, the Louvior Space Observatory and the European Space Agency's Plato Space Telescope. We are currently unable to get to any of these superhabitable planets, but they give an idea of where to look in the future, the potential to see if there are any conditions to create or sustain life elsewhere and answer the age-old question of are we alone in the universe? The Tunnel Beneath Stonehenge Between half a million and a million people visit Stonehenge each year. Naturally, this means that the road that passes by the monument has a lot of traffic on it, all year round. For some time, controversial plans to build a tunnel under the Stonehenge heritage site has been proposed. As you can probably imagine, archaeologists, enthusiasts, historians, scientists and even religious people are not particularly happy with this. It's not entirely known for sure what is under the historic monument and in the surrounding grounds and people are worried that prehistoric, potentially valuable items of cultural importance may be accidentally damaged or discarded as the tunnel site is excavated. In fact, the official report on the project admitted that there would be substantial harm to cultural heritage, landscape and a visual impact around Stonehenge. However, the last point made in the statement has caused controversy itself. The road nearby obviously causes a lot of noise and is somewhat a stain on undulating green hills that surround Stonehenge. The proposed tunnel would remove much of this visual pollution simply by putting the road underground. 
The proposal is a toss-up between potential harm to the grounds of a 5,000-year-old monument and reducing the eyesore that is the road close by. Similarly, the closure of the current road would allow for more hiking routes in the surrounding countryside. People would be able to approach Stonehenge from more directions without having to cross a busy road. Both the National Trust and English Heritage have praised the plans, which was all the approval that the government really needed to get. Yet others are still not pleased, and it's rumoured that protesters will even fly in from abroad to make a stand at Stonehenge. Highways England have assured those concerned that the landscape will be restored to its original shape after the works are completed. But is it really going to be possible to do this? Over 50 proposals have been put forward in the last few decades to construct such a tunnel, and there may have been a consistent reason why they have not been allowed to proceed. The proposed tunnel will run about 130 feet below the surface, which is well below any archaeological layers. However, the approach and entrance to the tunnel will cut through topsoil which could contain valuables and artefacts. Stonehenge is a historic site, and many believe that it should stay that way. After all, in an age when we're supposed to be reducing car travel and reducing carbon emissions, why are we making it easier to do so? Monuments such as Stonehenge are rare, and nothing we build today will reach Stonehenge's level of history for thousands of years, and it's important to remember that. Sacsayhuaman in Peru The word Sacsayhuaman comes from the Quechua language, translates roughly to royal eagle, or more literally, the place where the hawk was satiated. It is thought that it gained this name due to the high presence of these birds in the area where the structure was built. Sacsayhuaman is an architectural complex in the city of Cusco, Peru. The building was erected by the Incas in the 15th century under the 9th Incan leader, Pashacuti, Inca, Yupanqui and his successors. A project as massive as this necessitated the hard work of at least 20,000 labourers, which were divided by the thousands and given jobs such as quarrying duties, digging trenches and laying the foundations of this huge monument. This fortress is the largest built by the Incas. It was constructed on an elevated rocky head facing the northern marshy ground outside the Incan capital, Cusco. The Incas were known as master stonemasons, and their abilities are demonstrated wonderfully in this building. It was built using dry stone walls and boulders that were fit tightly together using mortar. Although they did not use anything to cement the stones together, their mechanics ensured that the building stood strong and stable. The huge blocks of stone making up the temple were shaped using nothing but harder rocks and bronze tools. Based on the marks left on these stones, researchers believe they were mostly pounded into shape rather than being cut. The blocks must have been moved around using ropes, levers, poles and earth-made ramps. This is evident due to the indentations that remained on the stones even after they were fit into place in the building. It was built to withstand earthquakes and the damage from such natural disasters through the interlocking of the blocks and sloped walls, which maximised protection. It is definitely apparent that this proved to be successful, as the building has survived over 500 years of earthquakes. The area also contains a variety of buildings, such as residential spaces, towers, holy places, warehouses, roadways and aqueducts. The positioning and placing of the area is similar to other Incan locations, like the Machu Picchu. It stands as a testament to the Incas' skills in architecture and their ability to create a structure that worked in harmony with the natural landscape of the place. It is simply incredible to see the remains of history and the magnificent skills and abilities of those who lived before us, and to be able to witness the architectural pursuits that were accomplished without the use of modern technology and resources. But what do you make of these impressive recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.